Hi, I'm Ali Patterson. On this episode of Future Banking, I speak with Nordnet and RBS about simplicity within IT systems. I also speak with the EBF about regulation and with Aptian about their response system. But first, I'm heading to Stockholm to talk about future proofing. So I've come to speak with Tieto about some of their core banking solutions. I think that the main source of being able to provide flexibility is having a service-oriented architecture Absolutely. where you can provide the front-end support for the front-end development, which we see in this case is very crucial for customers. Looking at that, if you have a flexible, proven, and also service-oriented architecture within your solution, I think you're very much set for the future. It's very difficult to prepare for everything that can happen, but if you have your foundation right and you have these sort of aspects within your solution, I think you're very well prepared. Now in terms of preparation, where would the automation for feedback fit in? So I've come to RBS to speak with Chris Popple about retail banking. We're starting to think to push transparency by trying to help customers help themselves. And what that means is um, doing things like, well, we know that you're about to go into overdraft. Not wait till you've done it. Um, send you a letter in the mail after a couple of days where you get and say, well, we're sorry, on the 4th of November you went into overdraft, and as a result of that we've charged you 10 pounds. I think that doesn't help banks. Uh, it doesn't help the industry. But instead to say, on the day that we know you're going to go into overdraft and it might result in a fee, um, the morning sends you a text message that says, please act now. Um, your balance is beyond your overdraft and you might be charged a fee. However, if you change this and you move money around or wh whatnot, then we won't charge you a fee. So making sure that it's clear that we, we really want you to behave well. We want you to, to be successful in your life and with your finances. And so why don't we do more things like that to tell you before it's going to happen, to give you the ability to act on it. I actually got a text from NatWest earlier, so it's clearly a good working system, but how would a bank actively manage complaints? So I've come to speak with Mark Chambers at Aptian about their response solution and how it can be used to effectively manage complaints within banking. When it really comes to analysing customer data, what's the best way of using that to really enhance the customer experience? And how would you really advise a bank to start to monetize that information? Yeah, it's when we talk to our customers and particularly on the complaints and feedback side with uh, our respond customers, one of the biggest challenges most organizations have is gathering that information and gathering data. And we find even within a single department, there's multiple spreadsheets and data is held in different formats and pulling that together. And that problem becomes exasperated when you look across the entire organization. So one of the big challenges that banks have is how do they make sensible decisions? How do they decide what are the top three issues that they need to address to improve customer service, customer satisfaction? In many cases, it's really just a best guess, uh, perhaps a conversation, a good feel that they might have uh, around a coffee table. But being able to bring that information together, so capturing it in the first place in a, in a sensible way, and this goes back right to the heart of, of making the systems easy and user-friendly, so you're capturing information throughout the organization uh, in a consistent way. Um, and again, with the Respond application, it's designed to make sure that it's very easy at the front line for people to capture information quickly and easily um, and in a consistent way. So you have a complete set of information in a single store or single database, which now allows you to run meaningful reports that aren't a, a best guess. They're starting to build on actual customer sentiment. So th does that feedback really sort of happen in, in real time to sort of back into the main system? Yeah, so with the Respond application, we capture the feedback directly at the, the front line. So whether that's through a self-service channel where the customer can, can put that information in directly and again, doing it in a consistent way that's appropriate for, for the particular bank uh, or financial service institution, or at one of the, the frontline touch points with the, within the, the bank, it all feeds into the same database. Now with response data, all that information, it raises a case of how to use that in all channels of communication. How have sort of customers, how do you think they would respond, for example, um, walking into branch and that, uh, that branch teller knowing what that per what the issue was last person last time that person called up uh, a contact center mm. or the last tweet they mentioned R um, RBS on that Western. Mm. So having a context of uh, a customer is really important. I mean that that I think this has been some of the best businesses and the best banks have um, have always had the ability to understand and to look and to see what's your context. What are your you know from the simplest to your holdings to 
you know, do you have a savings account, do you have a uh, current account? We are, we definitely, we have uh, uh, systems and processes now to make sure that when you do contact us, particularly in a branch and in telephony, that we take a moment um, to, to establish a context without asking a customer to repeat themselves yeah. um, and, and so to be a bit more proactive and to anticipate. We have, inve we have already investment and more investment planned in things like prompts. So, um, and the prompts are mainly service oriented. So, so what can you do with your money that will help you use the things that you already have today? It seems as though we're moving towards a stage of more automation and more self-service. Arguably, putting more information in the hands of the customer. To what level do you think we're gonna see more automation come in and how do you see customers responding to this? I, I'd actually flip that on its head. I think customers will drive that behavior. I think customers are, are less inclined to want to go into the branch for, for most of their transactions. They're less inclined to want to call through to a, a call center. I think we're seeing more and more self-serve um, requests. So if you go into the branch, you'll see customers going up to the, the self-serve kiosk. So we'll see things like complaints and feedback being captured directly on the, the frontline channels, which is where we do most of our banking. And what I think will happen over the next period of time, we'll see most of the the day-to-day -day transactions will no longer happen uh, with a, a another call service agent. They will be done self-service because it allows the customers to do things in their own time uh, on a device that suits them in a way that suits them. Um, but we'll see that the people who will be in those branches will now be elevated to subject matter experts. So when I go in and speak to somebody in the branch, it means I've got a, a, an important decision to make or I need some, some real information. I want to speak to somebody who really understands that product set. Imagine 20 years ago, a bank looking to become more automated with more self-service. It's challenging to say the least. It's only possible today because of digital technologies. I just sent uh, an email to an applicant for, for an open job here at Nordnet and, and uh, I was trying to explain how we are different in the sense that we're using UX in everything we do because we're a digital bank but still he sort of replied oh how interesting to be a bank that focuses on UX. So I think that Although we are sort of all saying the exact same thing in the sense that we all want to focus on the digital customer experience as we are a digital bank, I think it's really a difference between actually saying that you intend to do so and being able to do so. I think that the banking industry is far behind all the other industries and we have a long way to go. Also I think that everything in terms of banking is to trying to make, what we are trying to do is to make things simple. I mean that's, that's sort of the main intention for Nuna, to make investment, saving, that sort of, that, those sort of things, uh, simple. And I think that regulation, IT security, so the issues that we are uh, facing, those are taking us in the, in the wrong direction, or the customer experience in the wrong direction. Uh, so regulation taking us in the wrong direction and uh, really being flexible and, and trying to make things simple for customers. Creating a simple system is difficult but it all stems from a bank's core systems. In relation to this, also Tietos have launched a very interesting initiative with a large global player within transaction banking. And that is what we call, so to say, virtual account management. And what you do is in that sense is also in, in line with the previous discussion that we have here, that you are actually pushing the new development outside of the core. So if you have a good enough backend solution uh, with virtual accounting, Basically, what you do is you connect in a very simple way towards the back-end solution and also in the structured and a very documented way to the back-end solution. And you are pushing the new development and capabilities to create new products, new features, and also giving that control to your customers or to your end customers as well. So basically, what you are doing in that sense is that you are moving the complexity outside of the core also supporting the, the discussion that we had earlier on that, that the back-end solution is, their main purpose is supporting the front-end as far as service layer and functionality. The virtual account management is one example of how we can address corporate customers with cash management and payment functionality. That's basically within their own hands as far as uh, creating new products and setting up new account structures. I think that this is functionality that also will come in several other areas. We are basically adding components on, on a back-end core solution. But how will these components affect front-end systems? Customers really want uh, to be treated like a person by their bank. They need that customized service. How, how can really banks look to provide this to them? 
Yeah, I think if you, you think about the amount of information that banks are holding on, on all, of our, all of their customers at the moment, they know our age profile, they know uh, typically what our income is, they know what life stage we're at and what products and services we use. And because of tr the way that traditionally they've been set up and focused on either specific product silos or different channel silos, they're not really utilizing that information in a way that allows us as customers get a good experience. I think what banks need to do is to try and use that information a little bit better so that they can provide us with a, a view of, of the bank which we expect. So when I think of my bank, I don't think of it as a mortgage team or a lending team. I don't think of it as a, a savings team. I think of it as a, a single bank. Considering some of the core replacements that certain banks have, have done recently, are there any sort of particular best practices or, or lessons learned that you think would be very applicable to banks? Yes, of course. There are a lot of lessons learned out there due to a number of successful and even more failed projects within the core banking replacement. However, there is no blueprint that works for everyone, I think. You need to, to adapt to the situation, you need to adapt to your customer, and you need to take the lessons learned and use them in your situation, I think. And first and foremost, I think that you need to have a very clear and shared view of the goal of the project. Is it cost saving? Is it more efficient processes? Or is it uh, time to market or new business development? Or it could be all of them, basically. But I think you need to have your priorities set before going into such a transition project, because it's a huge project. And you do, should not underestimate doing your homework. Uh, I think that everything is about context. I think that everything is about knowing more about your customer. Although we're talking a lot about the sort of the the scare of the losing integrity. I think we're getting accustomed to services where the bank know more about us than we think and that we actually want them to know. Uh, and I think that, you know, if you take the Google Glass, they're actually monitoring everything you do. It's, you have the GPS, you have the camera, you have everything, you have, actually have a sound. So basically what they are just doing is they're following you around. So it's taking away integrity and at, at, at aggregating data from you. And I think the future is, whether it comes to Google Glass or whether it is here at Nordnet where we just sort of made a chief analytics officer, just to look at data in order to be relevant in the communications channels that you have. I think that's the future of banking. Uh, today it's still about sort of the customer coming to the bank. We need to be where the customer is, whether it's in social media or whether it's in uh, wherever it is, we need to be in that sort of arena because time has gone when, when sort of we could be sort of the, the rich bank sitting waiting for the customers to come with a hat in the hand and ask for a service. So I think future technology is about aggregating data wherever it is and just being relevant to the customer in the right channels. Like Metro Bank, Nordnet tends to put the customer first. But in the case of RBS, this raises the question of scalability. For teams that have typically built some of their legacy systems on, on mainframes, scalability has been one of their one of their main concerns. Have you found the recent financial environment in terms of the demand for more scalable systems? We, we see constantly increasing data volumes today and that is not only by transaction volumes and so on but we see a lot of increase in, in end customer traffic as far as front-end channels and mobile channels and especially mobile channels. Looking at the, the increased in capacity need for, for supporting the, the front-end solutions, when the mobility came into the picture, it's a tremendous increase. And that requires scalability. It's interesting that Tieto spoke about scalability and some of the regulations surrounding it. How far do you see the developments of, of mobile banking as, as a channel, I suppose, moving forward over the, over the next couple of years? But I think it is a trend that is taken very seriously. Uh, that will indeed see uh, innovative uh, market uh, entrants and players to, to offer these kind of uh, facilities and services. I think it depends also to uh, some extent uh, the culture and the tradition of the banking market in which uh, you uh, will, will come in and, and offer this kind of service. Um, Fraud, again, is going to be a major consideration. How secure are these systems? Will people really be happy with that? Are they comfortable that, uh, yeah, if you lose your phone or if it's stolen, then what happens? Uh, is there immediate access into your account or only a limited? Uh, what are the insurance arrangements behind that? So I think there is still some work to be done and to be clarified there, but I'm sure it's coming and I'm sure there's going to be 
plenty of um, market uh, participants that are giving this thought at the moment. At the end of the day, the bank needs to know its, con its customer, needs to know where they live, who they are, what they are, and sort of other considerations, uh, wider considerations of anti-terror, et cetera, and then anti-fraud. Um, deposit guarantee schemes, all these elements will end up uh, kicking in and then I think once you have mobile banking, to what extent can that be used to offer products to that particular client? How will that be done? There are some uh, considerations to be had over, over that kind of investment advice or investment practice and, and what types of products are appropriate or not. So I think it will move. I think it will move uh, faster than we may expect, but there is a whole regulatory framework that needs to be uh, considered and, and see to what extent it does or does not. On the next Future Banking, we head to Brussels to speak more with the EBF. We're also speaking with Sopra Banking Systems about some of their core systems.